All right, here we go. The next one you can see here, Chapter 23. This is the Age of Metternich. This is the Congress of Vienna, 1815 to 1848, the Concert of Europe. What does that mean? Everyone in Europe's working together. Um, you could. One thing to remember, I'm going to do this one next, the Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution is happening the same time as the last two videos, or last video and this video. It's happening the same time as the French Revolution is happening in Europe. The Industrial Revolution is happening in England. And then after the defeat of Napoleon, the Industrial Revolution will spread to the continent. So I just want to throw that out there, even though I'm going to talk about the Congress of Vienna, because I want you to remember this is happening concurrently. As I said way back with the Reformation stuff and everything, all of this overlaps. Hopefully your packets show you that at least a little bit. So what's the Congress of Vienna? What's the big picture for this time period? 1815, 1848, that's probably a better date than 50, because... Um, it ends with those revolutions. All right. It's all about protecting, <clears throat> excuse me, it's all about protecting conservatism. The Enlightenment inspires the French Revolution. The French Revolution scares monarchs. Monarchs are trying to hold on to power. This whole year so far, and this is the start of second semester, French Revolution ended the first semester. The whole year is about centralization of power. Monarchs rising. Enlightened thinkers have a problem with that. Enlightened thinkers try to come up with changes to that. French Revolution tries all that. Well, the French Revolution is awesome for a while. Turns into a total debacle. Lots of people die. Europe's in war. People are not happy. All right. So Metternich, working as you can see here for Francis II, is going to lead this charge um, to protect protect conservatism. So this whole time period, big picture, this is socialism, this is communism, this is romanticism, this is Greek war for independence. It's all those things that threaten, liberal ideas that threaten uh, Metternich's conservative world, things that didn't exist back prior to the French Revolution. All right? Guys like, you know I had to say it, Count Henri de saint and those other kind of people. All right. So the concert of Europe, everyone together, everyone working together to protect uh, conservatism and get rid of liberalism. Metternich is the guy in charge. Real quick, Metternich, he's Austrian, lower class noble. No place will change, destroy a country more than Austria because liberalism inspires nationalism nationalism inspires revolution the magyars we briefly mentioned before in the age of absolutism are a threat to metternich he can't have them destroy his country so he's going to be the architect of this all right the congress as you can read there on the bottom the uh metternich over here Metternich and Castlereagh enjoying the, you know, enjoying their work, kind of happy, just relaxing. You got the Austrians, the Austrians, the Prussians, and the Russians all celebrating, and some smaller countries stuck on the outside. This is a big thing. This is a map change. One thing I haven't had a chance to do, I'll try to get to, we'll work on it here. Maps. Look at maps. Look at changes. So when do changes happen? Well, they're going to happen in the, uh, what you call it, 1713 with the War of Austrian Succession and the Peace of Utrecht. So look at Europe before 1713, look at Europe after 1713. That's the big Dutch one. The big area that changes, and I don't have a map, well, eh, you kind of see it behind the writing here. This area here, the Netherlands area, it's all Spanish, and it's Spanish and that is independent and Austrian and and looking at this list right here these are big changes that happen okay you can read through that on your own okay I don't know what that's in there for so let's just move forward um, same kind of deal land changes land changes all right so you got the things that Metternich does and you've got the things that happen that he doesn't want to happen here are two things that he's doing Austria Russia Prussia are your big three conservative countries holy alliance uh, England's kind of doing their own thing they're industrializing they don't care about anyone else and France is just being France they're stuck in the middle they're constantly having revolution there's constantly the threat of change they're there just trying to hold on remember Carlsbad decrees classic example of liberalism 
I'm sorry, the Carlsbad decrees are trying to stop liberalism in universities, trying to stop uh, liberalism in newspapers. So the same things today that are called liberal Carlsbad decrees attacked. All right, well, what is Metternich trying to stop then? Well, you have economic liberalism, Adam Smith, Wealth of Nations. Okay, right down here. Laissez-faire, capitalism. Capitalism is going to replace mercantilism. Mercantilism is an age of absolutism idea. I didn't really give you a lot on mercantilism, but it's the whole idea of export more than you import. You want a lot of gold, colonies, all that kind of stuff. But the government ran mercantilism. Capitalism is just what you all know it is, so I can move on from that pretty quick. Up here, I mean things like the Constitutional Charter of 1815 that Louis XVIII had to accept. Remember, Louis XVIII is brought back to power. He's a Bourbon monarch. They bring him back um, because, um, what's his name, Bishop Talleyrand, the most conservative thing, most conservative group still existing in France is the Catholic Church. They work with Metternich and all these people, and they pick the Bourbons, bring them back. So this was a limits to his power. Kind of liberal, not real happy about it. The Metternich's not, but at least we have a a uh, a uh, conservative government back in charge. Okay? There's other things, but we're going to keep moving forward here. Nationalism. So, so what are the threats? What am I talking about? I'm talking about things that are happening at the same time that Metternich can't stop. Liberalism, capitalism. Remember, a lot of most conservatives in this area are actually actually classic liberals. They wanted the exact same thing today that these people wanted back then. Metternich's also fearful of nationalism. We talked about nationalism. And then there's socialism. All right, your Count Henri, Count Henri de saint simon your Charles Voyer, I have to say it again, you know I have to, Louis Blanc, no, sorry, Pierre Proudhon, and this one's Louis Blanc. Louis Blanc is the workshops guy. His ideas will actually be tried. Paris Commune, he's considered an anarchist, goofball anarchist. This guy's just an odd duck, and this guy's the doers and the parasites. Okay, Socialism, why? Why now? Industrial Revolution. Talked about that before. Haven't done the little video for it yet, but talked about it before. As more people get jobs in factories, more options um, happen for people. People start to look for better working conditions. Remember, factories are brutal. Factories are terrible. Hours are long. Um, these guys are coming up with ideas to help these kind of you know, help the workers out. All right. So socialism is all about helping the workers out. And then there's extreme version of it. This is something you should also give yourself an extra 15, 20 minutes, hours, 16 hours of studying. Okay, not 16 hours. Communism's a big deal. Why do you think communism is something that they like to put on the AP test? Because communism is something that will be tried. They want you to know 1917 to 1989. It's obviously 72 years of European history. Obviously, it's a huge deal. So why? Why does it happen? Boom, you got to know this guy. You got to know 1840s. You got to know Karl Marx, Communist Manifesto, works with Frederick Engels. So that's another thing to think about. When you're studying, say, we didn't do anything with this in the future. Study it. Remember it. You could still get a question, but it's not going to be that big of a deal. When you're reading through this, say, oh, yeah, this is what the Russians try. This is what the Soviets try. You know it's a bigger deal. You know you got to spend more time on it. French Revolution. Inspires change, inspires the age of Metternich, inspired by the Enlightenment. So the things that have an impact in the future, you got to spend more time studying. Marxism is one of the biggest things. Question is almost always on the bourgeoisie here and the proletariat. All right. Bourgeoisie are going to be the wealthier owners. The proletariat are the workers. They are going to rise up and revolt in Engels' world. All right, crush the bourgeoisie. Eventually, they'll get sick of it and destroy them. Okay, there's more to it, but I'm giving you the fast version. What else does Metternich have to deal with? He's got to deal with the romantics. He's got to deal with this notion of can we have a better place? You know, this picture down here, liberty leading the people. It's romanticizing the French Revolution. Um, this is a later one. It's not Les Mis. 
I don't want to get excited about that. They're romanticizing Marat. Marat was a goofball. He laid in a bathtub and soaked and talked about killing people and going crazy. But yet, by the 1840s with the Romantic movement, we celebrate him. We celebrate him as this, this awesome writer. That's what Metternich's afraid of. The Romantics are going, and then there's literature, there's music. You can check it all out. Uh, we're skipping this for right now. <clears throat> the Romantics are going to inspire... Hmm, this is a whole bunch of other little things here. The Greek Revolution, I'm not sure why that's not in here. The Romantics are going to inspire the Greek War for Independence. That is one success. That is one success that um, Metternich can't stop. Why the heck is 1848 not in here? This is one thing. Ah, there we go. All right. This is one thing Metternich can't stop. He can't stop the Greek Revolution, and this is the Romantics having a say in it, convincing people to, um, you know, help out the Greeks. So this is classic Romanticism. You've got this supposedly, you know, help these people down here being slaughtered by the more powerful, armed, shadowy figures. This is what Romantics do. They don't lie. They just stress something different. <laughs> okay? So you have lots of liberal reforms happening that Metternich can't stop. The English have it. Remember the Corn Laws, and then uh, the prices are so jacked up that people can't get enough food. They can't afford food. So you're going to get some pushing for liberalism. Chartist movement. So people's charter is the Chartist movement. It's the idea of uh, everyone, universal male suffrage. Male, not everyone, but universal male, not universal everyone suffrage. And in England, you're going to get this competition for voting rights for males. This is slowly over time, 32, 47 and stuff, 66, you know, different voting, uh, 67 I should say, and then 84, 1884. Eventually by 1884, every man gets the right to vote. So they're giving people more. All right, there's the Irish, we're skipping that right now. You have other French revolutionary stuff. Remember the Constitutional Charter is gotten rid of by the reactionary Charles X, which leads to the revolution. Three glorious days, got it written right there, of, uh, that replaces Charles X, Louis Philippe. He does a great job until 1848, or doesn't do a great job. He doesn't do anything until 1848, and they eventually get rid of him. Okay, So you have lots of little things happening. And then my final minute here on this little video, what happens then is it all comes to a head in 1848. So this one doesn't seem like it makes sense to me, so let me try to clean this up real quick. You had conservative politics trying to protect the past, but you had a whole bunch of influences threatening the world of Metternich. Socialism, romanticism, capitalism, liberalism in general, nationalism, communism. These things apply to the masses of people, not the conservative elite. 1848 is the pinnacle of the masses not happy with the conservative elite. And you're going to get revolutions in France, Austria, Prussia, and even um, northern Italy. Okay? Why not Russia? Too far behind. The masses aren't as upset. Why not England? They've already done it their way ahead. All these revolutions fail. They fail because they're, you know, for a variety of different reasons. In Austria, they fail because they call in the Russians to crush it. In Prussia, it fails because they end up bringing the same king back. And they get rid of him and bring him back, and he just restores power. Um, where's the other? France, it fails because they end up, you know, just being goofy about it. All right, they try the the national workshops, and all these people flock to Paris, and they can't provide uh, jobs for all of them, and it ends up collapsing. Um, even though they do hold free elections and pick Napo uh, Louis Napoleon as king, so it looks like it's a success until he makes himself an emperor again in 1851. So I guess the French one works longer than the rest of them. But this all comes to a head, this, this conservatism versus liberalism comes to a head in 1848, and then after 1848, you get some big-time changes. So that's the next one I think I want to do.